This is a mindset right here. I see it all over the world because I pray for people all over the world. And I can listen to someone's prayer request and I can tell exactly where their mindset is in view of themselves. Because we think humility is, is given only a testimony of what I've been delivered from. You see, this mindset right here only develops a testimony of what I've been delivered from, but it never develops the revelation of what I've been redeemed to. And it only lives according to the darkness I've been freed from instead of the light I've been held to. Oh, man. This is, I, I can tell it when I'm around someone and, uh, and they tell their testimony and 95% of their testimony is about the darkness they came out of and only 3% or 5% of it, it's about Christ. You see, this mindset right here will still allow darkness to define the level of truth you can live according to. This mindset right here only lives by the faithfulness of what I've been delivered from. Is there anything wrong with you being thankful of where God has brought you out of? Absolutely not. All of you that know my story know that I live with a gratefulness, that I live with a thankfulness of the life that he delivered me from. But my mindset did not stop there. I am not just a testimony of my deliverance. I am a demonstration of his redemption. That's the beauty of the gospel. Oh, that's the beauty of what he has done for me. But this, this saved sinner mentality will always require the sacrifice of your identity. It is rooted in false humility because false humility says this, I have to demean myself in order to exalt my Christ. Do you realize this son has predetermined God, the Father's response to him, which is an illusion, this is the reason people come back to the Father and they only view themselves out of that darkness they were delivered from. They only view themselves as that saved sinner is because they have predetermined the Father's response to their problem. They have predetermined the Father's response to the darkness they're being pulled out of. And even though he goes back to the Father, I want you to notice and pay attention now as we go progress right here, how the Father goes to dismantle this mindset. Oh, it's beautiful. Ooh. Luke 15, verse 20. So he returned home. Now listen to this. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Listen to this. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. Wow. We just saw that the son predetermined the father's response, and he says this right here, the son, I, I, I'm willing to sacrifice my identity, I'm, I'm willing to, to sacrifice my sonship, just as long as he lets me in the house, just as long as he lets me come in to be with him. You see, and the father knows this predetermined response, and so what the father is doing, he's anticipating the son's return, and he's sitting there every day, and he's just like, I cannot wait to see my son coming down the road. I cannot wait to see my child coming back to be redeemed. And even though he has developed a mindset that's destroying him, I'm going to come and break that mindset and reestablish identity, value, and purpose. This is a father, man. Oh. And the father sees him coming, and as I say, with judgment and condemnation, it says with love and compassion, with tears in his eyes, he, see his, he sees his son and he runs out to him. You see, why did the father meet the son in the street before he gets into the home? Because he wanted to restore and redeem the son before he came into the house. He did not want to bring the son into the home as a sinner. He wanted to bring him into the home as a son. Three people are excited about that. I know this is a simple message, man, but we need to hear this. Yeah. 
It's time for us to realize what we, we, what we have been redeemed to. And it's time for us to realize the Father is not condemning you. The Father is not judging you. The Father doesn't look at that land that you built on your own. And he's not picking that land apart and trying to figure out everything. Listen, he is like, no, you come into my house because this was your proper land to begin with. He, he's preoccupied with your identity, not your sin. Uh, He's already, oh, he's already dealt with these things. Hey guys, we'll be right back to the message. I just wanted to let you know that Voice of the Apostles, one of our flagship conferences, is happening soon. We have amazing speakers, including Bill Johnson, Heidi Baker, Dr. Randy Clark, and many others. We'd love to see you there in person. But if you can't make it, you can also attend online. Click the link to learn more. Now back to the message. Romans chapter 5 verse 19 says, Through one man's disobedience, I were made sinners. But through one man's obedience, I were made righteous. Do you realize your inheritance changed when you came back to Christ and was redeemed? Now you no longer have a right to relate your life to the fall of man, but to the resurrection of Christ. All right. He was still a long ways off and filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son and he embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. You see, this is the predetermined mindset. This is the predetermined conclusion that the son has to the father. He has already judged himself. A lot of the judgment that Christians are living according to are the judgments they've passed on their themselves, not God. You have condemned your own life and you live according to your own judgment. He has predetermined this response that the Father is going to give. Oh, man. And when he gets to the Father, he even quotes to the Father, Father, I've sinned. I am no longer worthy. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. I, I, I don't want to live this life. I'm just, willing to be a mo I'm just willing to be a servant. Just let me in the house. But this is how the father responds. Oh, man. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening, we must celebrate. Wow. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Wow. This is a beautiful redemption. The father meets his son out in the pathway, out in the street, and he says, I'm here to dismantle that way of thinking that's causing you to, to, to sacrifice identity as a son. And this is how I'm going to establish you and redeem you. I'm going to put the finest robe in the house. Who has the finest robe in the house? The father himself. The father himself takes his robe, which represents royalty, and he puts it upon his son, and he puts it over his son, and his son looks like pigs. His son looks like the slop that he's been living in. His son looks like, a, uh, looks like someone that's beaten down and broken. But what does he do? He covers all the mistakes. He covers all the sin. He covers all the things that he has ever done. It's the beauty of the cross. Do you realize that the cross is the beginning of your Christian life, not the end? It's just a pathway, an entrance, a doorway for you to begin your life with Christ. That's the beauty of the gospel is that when he went to that cross, he bore everything for you. He bore all of your sins and all of your, all of your decisions. And he says, I'm nailing it to the cross so that when they step here, I can put my robe on them. And 
This son, he's met by this loving father, and this father kisses him, and this father filled with compassion. He says, son, let me redeem you right now in royalty, in my righteousness. You see, this robe also represents his righteousness. Do you realize you don't live according to your righteousness, you live according to his? He says, son, let me put a ring on your finger. What does this ring represent? This ring represents the restoration of position, the, repre the, the uh, repre uh, redemption of authority and power and position as a son. He says, let me put sandals on your feet. Do you realize servants don't wear sandals, but the sons do? And he puts these sandals on his feet, and these sandals represent his sonship. And then what does he do? He takes the son right back into the, to the home in the same state that he was when he left. He brings him in as a redeemed son, not as a saved sinner. And I know this is, this is as simple as it gets. But I'm asking you, is your will submitted to his? I'm asking you, are you building your own land? Are you building your own gospel? Are you forming Jesus in your image or are you being made in his? Are you the governor of your own life? Are you making your own decisions and going your own way? Or are you on a daily basis say, I have an opportunity right here to give back to my father the most precious gift that I can offer and that is the submission of my will. It just puzzles my mind that he would give you a will because he doesn't want to force you to love him because forced love is rape. He wants you to love him because that's what you choose to do on a daily basis. He wants you to be a follower of him because that's what you choose to do on a daily basis. And I'm asking you saints, I'm asking you sons, I'm asking you family, I'm asking you daughters, have you submitted your will? Have you said, I choose to lay this thing down? I choose. Because if you haven't, then you haven't been converted. Listen, you've had a confession but not a conversion. I am not going to proclaim Christ with my lips and live for the devil by principle. I'm not going to do it. He has done too much in my life. What I want you to see now, what I want you to see is not just the deliverance of what you've come from, but the redemption of what you've come to. And what I want that you to know right now, God wants to bring these two revelations together for you. But the beauty of this is going to be found in the submission of your will to him. It's going to be found in the beauty of me saying, I choose right now to become the sacrifice that God can breathe on on a daily basis. And I'm not going to allow what people think about me, what people say about me, to redefine my destiny because my... Oh. I'm defined by the voice of my father. I'm wearing the finest robe in the house. I have the ring on my finger that shows it. I have the sandals on my feet. I'm just praying. I'm not addressing the church. <laughs> you see, I see a room filled with men and women that are hungry for the Lord. I see a room filled with men and women that says, I choose to lay it down. I no longer am I going my way. No longer am I building. No longer am oh man, I just want to flip off this thing. <laughs> this is this is the beauty of the gospel. And my concern for the church is that.
is that we have held to a form of godliness but denied the power thereof. That I'm just serving myself in his name. God, let a holy fear come upon your people again. Let a holy reverence come upon your people again, God. If I can have the worship team come back up here for me just for a minute. I believe this room is filled with sons and daughters right now. You have gone your own way. You have done your own thing. And you know, you know that you've hit rock bottom. You know that your bank account is depleting. You know that you've reached the fullness of your resources because of the ownership you demanded of your own life. Can I just be vulnerable for you guys? I love God with everything that I am. Of course, I go to places where I'm afraid that I may lose my life. Of course, of course, I'm uncomfortable all the single time, but it's not about me. When I gave my life to Jesus, I lost my right to represent myself. This is what he's calling us to, family. This is what he's calling us to. If you want to step into the more in your life, it's going to begin by the submission of your will. It's going to begin by the decision right here, right now to say, I do not demand ownership anymore. I know my father knows the best about my life. And I know he knows when to give things to me and in the proper season and time. And so I'm not going to sit around and demand ownership because I think I should have something before it's time. <laughs> 